How's it going guys? It's Cass. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about the boss rushing strategy I've been using to farm close to 9 divines an hour guaranteed. Right now boss rushing is probably the best it's ever been and that's just given because everything related to bosses is extremely expensive due to how many people are playing magic find and not doing boss based content. Right now incandescent invitations are close to 3 divines which is absolutely absurd it means that if you have a build that's able to farm T14 plus bosses quickly, you can get an absurd amount of profit by running maps with absolutely no investment. It's no secret that Magic Find is absolutely absurd in this league. The league mechanic has made it so Magic Find is just better than most things. However, there is a pretty big barrier to entry when it comes to playing Magic Find, so this strategy goes away from that completely. If you want to farm currency to play Magic Find later, this is a great strategy to start with. Or if you're like me and just want to turn your brain off and farm, this is also a great strategy for you. Normally with boss rushing strategies, you want to buy a ton of maps and run them as fast as possible. But for me personally, I hate having to buy maps. So I've made a strategy that will sustain maps while boss rushing, so you never have to worry about buying maps and you can just blast. All right, so with that out of the way, let's talk about how this strategy actually works. So the first thing is, is you're going to notice I'm running all of my maps with absolutely no juice on them whatsoever, literally just scouring the maps and then putting them in the map device and running it. The reason why this is, is because everything that we get from this strategy profit wise is either coming from a map boss or it's coming from a duplication because of the connected map that's dropping just because of your Atlas passive tree. So there's nothing in here that actually gets more value out of having more investment into your maps so there's really no reason to invest anything into your maps the goal is to just run them as fast as possible as long as you're running a map every around 40 seconds you're going to be doing nine divines an hour easily just in the invitations alone so you're talking 10 plus divines with any luck whatsoever so basically what you're going to do is once you have your scoured map going to put in your map device you're going to make sure that you select searing exarch for this one because the exarch invitations are significantly more expensive that's because most of the people that are doing high level magic find are using eater of worlds just because of how much duplication eater of world alters give you so you want to be running searing exarch the next thing is is i'm not running a map like mesa the reason why i'm not running a map like mesa is because we want to be killing mobs on the way to the boss this is going to allow us to get more map duplication and is going to give us more map drops in general. Now, a disclaimer here, I've changed my Atlas strategy a little bit while making this video, so I probably won't actually drop any maps in here, and I probably don't even have the correct connected map set up. So we'll talk about maps and stuff in a little bit here, but basically, you're just going to want to clear things going to the map, map boss, and you want to ignore things like that are going to slow you down. So you want to ignore... Harbinger, you want to ignore Legion. Since you don't have any investment into Harbinger or Legion, you're not really losing out on anything. And basically what you're gonna do is once you get to the map boss here, you kill the map boss, and then you go back to town. And then you reset, okay? And of course, of course, I still get drops even though my Atlas isn't set up for it. Once we're back in town, you just continue to recycle. You know, hide out is lava, make sure you put in a map. Then once you put in a map, then you go to your stash and depot while your map is loading. Small things like that are going to make you more efficient. Now let's talk about how the map process actually works and how we go about sustaining maps in this strategy. So first things first, you're going to want to make sure that you're favoriting the opposite map that you're running because of how map duplication works. So if we look at our passive tree, this is not the passive tree you're going to be using. The passive tree will be in the description. As you can see here, with these adjacent map drop chance nodes, you get 4% for each node. You have a 100% chance with the Atlas strategy that we're running, and it's going to make it so you drop a connected map. What is a connected map? A connected map is a map that is next to the map that you are running. So say we're running Dunes, that means you can get Glacier, that means you can get Chateau, or that means you can get Castle Ruins. In our case, we want to get Castle Ruins. So you're going to go to your favoriting slot, and you're going to favorite Castle Ruins for every single slot. And what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that you are getting a ton of castle ruins maps so then when you run out of dunes you'll do the exact opposite you're going to run your castle ruins maps and you're going to make sure that you want to run dunes instead of castle ruins in your favorite slot and this is going to be what's going to allow you to infinitely sustain these maps 
And it's going to get you to a point where you're like me and you have so many dunes maps that you're literally filling tabs of these maps separately you because of how much you're over sustaining those dunes maps individually t16 dune maps in bulk will sell for at least 6c per and you can make a ton of currency just selling the dune maps alone on top of the invitations but that's basically how this strategy works you're going to want to be killing mobs on the way to the boss but you also want to make sure that you're being efficient with how you're playing and you're not wasting time doing mechanics that you aren't investing in as long as you're doing maps quickly under 40 seconds per map you're going to be making 10 plus divines an hour with this strategy and it's going to be super super easy so instead of just having a link to this in the description which there is one i thought i'd also talk through some of the main points in the actual atlas passive tree so first things first is you want to have wandering paths what this does it makes it so your notables do nothing but all of the smaller nodes are doubled so instead of having 0.5 chance to duplicate maps you now have one percent chance instead of having one percent or two percent chance for a monster in your map to drop a connected map you now have four percent chance and basically how this works is fairly simple you want to get a hundred percent chance for one monster in your map to drop a connected map this makes it so it's fairly easy to sustain maps as long as you're killing on the way to the boss as well as killing the boss obviously then on top of that you want to have as much map duplication as possible right now we have 37 percent chance to duplicate a map which is fairly good i like to take these notes up here they make it so you have four percent increased effect of modifiers on your map basically just gives you a little bit more base quant base rarity to get uh the potential for higher tier drops and the potential to have more maps drop map drops in general with extra quant then lastly the thing that i like to focus is getting master missions so there's a lot of other options that you can do here you could honestly take off these master missions and do something else the main thing is is for the most part anything else that you're doing outside from maybe like heist is going to just add more content and slow you down so the reason why i like to take master missions is you get these just for completing the map so you don't have to change anything right so in this case, I have Alva Master Missions here and down here. So this gives me 12% chance to get an Alva Mission on map completion. Then I also have Kirik Missions over here and over here. This gives me a 14% chance to have a Kirik Mission at the end. And then I also have June Missions. This gives me 12% chance to have June Missions. And basically what this does, this allows you to just have extra currency piling up while you're running these maps because you can just run your June missions afterwards by specking into them. You can run your Kirak missions whenever you want really, and you can run your Alva missions just by specking into them as well and get temples that way too. So basically what this does, this allows you to just do the boss rushing strategy normally, but then also get these as something on the side. But like I said, you don't necessarily need them for this strategy to function. The only thing that you really need is the connected map chance the max duplication and make sure you have wandering path and you're good to go finally let's talk about what to expect from this farm this farm is something that is completely guaranteed as long as you are running maps efficiently around like i said before 40 seconds per map you will be making nine divines an hour doing this strategy your goal is to run 84 maps an hour if you're plus or minus 10 minutes you might lose like half a divine in your per hour profit but for a strategy that requires no investment and honestly you don't even have to buy maps to begin with as long as you have five dunes maps or five castle ruins maps you can do the ping pong strategy as much as you want and get up to a place where you're over sustaining these maps fairly quickly so with that in mind i did decide to record an hour of me doing this strategy just to show you what else can happen and in that hour, I farmed actually 21 divines because I got two memories that were worth 11 divines on top of the normal outcome of this farm, which is the three invitations and a ton of other maps that were also worth a decent amount. So basically what I'm getting at here is the goal of this strategy is not only just to get the invitations, but since we're also running maps efficiently, there is still a chance for you to get a ton of extra currency just with the current state of the game. We are also ignoring the league mechanic. So if you want to play this league mechanic, unfortunately, this isn't the strategy for you. But if we are trying to put in the league mechanic with the strategy, the only thing that's really doing is slowing us down. So you want to make sure that you aren't running the league mechanic for this. But with that in mind, this is a strategy. The links to everything will be in the description below. 
If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. And hopefully this will be a nice way to make some easy currency to get to a place where your build is even stronger or to push you to a place where you can try something new in one of the best leagues that POAs had to offer. Thanks for watching.